Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. In 1917, Our Lady entrusted three secrets to the children of Fatima, the principal of which was Lucy, Lucia. She was told that the third of these secrets could only be revealed in 1960. 1960 passed and it was not released. In the year 2000, the Vatican released what they, what the Vatican called the third secret. But to this day, there are a number of Catholics that question whether in the year 2000, that full third secret was revealed, if there's more of the secret to come, or whether that third secret was just a completely made up secret. And at the same time, there are plenty of Catholics that also think the third secret has been released and that Fatima is now a thing of the past. So I'm going to look at the opinions of 30 different Catholics, well-known Catholics, and their opinions on the third secret, whether it has been revealed or not. Here we are looking at our array of Catholics, and I'm going to get straight into it. So up first, Father Nicholas Gruner. I put him first because, as you may well know, he spearheaded the campaign to have the third secret released. And then after it was released, he spearheaded the campaign saying that this is not the full third secret. He felt that this wasn't the full third secret, that this vision of the Bishop in White getting shot was surely a vision that the children received. But it wasn't the full third secret, and the third secret has not yet been fully revealed. Okay, here is Cardinal Sodano. In the year 2000, he was the Vatican Secretary of State, and he was the one who announced that the third secret was going to be released. And he signed his name to the document saying that this is the full third secret of the bishop going through a ruined city. And then as the bishop goes up the hill, the hill in which there are corpses of dead religious, this bishop himself is then shot by guns and also with bows and arrows. Then there's an angel that cries, penance, penance, penance. So he definitely believed that the full third secret was released. In fact, he put his name, his signature, on the fact that this was the full third secret. John Paul II, yeah, he felt the third secret had been fully released because he considered himself to be that bishop in white. In fact, he saw his whole life as linked to the message of Fatima. And although some people say earlier, had he, had he seen more secrets? Did he see something else? It seems pretty clear that John Paul II took this vision, this four-page document recounting the vision, to be the full third secret of Fatima. And he claimed that it referred to himself. Next up, this is uh, Christopher Ferrara. Now, he is one of, he is one of the key players in the Fatima Center, the, the organization that continues the work of Father Nicholas Gruner. And... Christopher Ferrara is a, a legal scholar and I wouldn't like to get into a debate with him about anything. And he has done a really insightful analysis looking at the fact that we expected and there were a number of indications that the third secret was actually on a one sheet of paper, a single sheet of paper that Cardinal Ottaviani had said, yes, the secret is on a single sheet of paper. And also the Bishop of um, Fatima Leira during the times of the apparitions and in the period after, the one that received the envelope with the secret in, he said it's a single sheet of paper. And so Chris Ferrara said, well, what is this force? where are these four sheets of paper coming from? And he argues that there are two aspects of the third secret. There's the four-page document with this vision, and then there's a single sheet, which was an aspect of a letter in the form of a letter. And that that letter has not been released, and that is what we would call the remaining part of the third secret that has still not yet been released. Father Apostoli, Andrew Apostoli, who wrote a book on Fatima, and a lot of people really like this book that he's written on Fatima. Some of you maybe will comment below about this book. It's well recommended, and he, in that book, makes it very clear that the full third secret has been released. He takes the opinion of Pope John Paul II, and of the Vatican to be certain, and that there are basically mistakes about this whole thing there being 
um, two letters, one with a single sheet, one with four sheets. You know, he says that was a confusion and that the full third secret has been released. Clemente Dominguez, anti-Pope Clemente Dominguez. Where does he stand on a full third secret? He's the guy that was in Palma de Troya claiming he was a pope. Now, he says that the full third, the secret that was released in 2000 was not the full third secret. He tells us that Our Lady revealed to him that the third secret, in actual fact, was that the papacy would be transferred to Palma de Troya and given to none other than himself. You know, no one else has ever said that. Lucia never said that. And you would have thought Lucia would have become a Palmarian if that was true, because she would have known the full third secret and she would have become a Palmarian. But no, she didn't. Uh, but anyway, he does say the full third secret was never released. And I don't know how, how Father Gruner and Chris Ferrara feel about being in the company of this guy. But there you go. Next up, this is uh, someone you won't recognize. is a man called Antonio Sochi. And, you know, he is a journalist. And he came out of nowhere, I think, in the years after the year 2000, after the third secret was released, the supposed third secret was released. He came out of nowhere and released this book in Italian. I think it's called The Fourth Secret of Fatima. And I remember talking to Chris, Chris Ferrara. Um, and, you know, there was an excitement because there was someone else in a different language coming to the same conclusions as himself and Father Gruner. And that book was subsequently translated into English. So he again gives a really insightful analysis into why, why there's a, quite a bit of a doubt as to whether the third secret was fully released in 2000. Jimmy Aiken. Now, Jimmy Aiken uh, worked, works for Catholic Answers, and he's got a really great show, Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World, that I, I listen to nearly every week. And he's got an episode on the third secret of Fatima. In fact, he's got two episodes on Fatima, one of which deals with the subject of the third secret. And this guy, again, he's a smart guy, and I wouldn't want to be in a debate with him either. And he gives a fairly strong defense of the idea that the third secret has been released in its entirety. One of the key aspects of his argument is if you believe that the third secret has not been fully released, then you are saying that Pope John Paul II, Cardinal Sodano, and a number of others whom we will see, that they are lying. And so Jimmy Aiken puts a lot of weight on that one, the idea that the alternative of there being this massive cover-up in the Vatican he thinks that is that is very far-fetched, and so he dismisses it. Next up, Pope Benedict. Now, he is an interesting one, and there's, there's a lot of stuff on him. You'd think it'd be really easy for me to put him in this category, third secret fully released. You'd think so, because after all, he, he as, as the head of the CDF, co-authored a document saying that the third secret corresponded to the vision of the bishop in white getting shot and suggesting that maybe this was Pope John Paul II's attempted assassination in 1981, I think it was. However, with Benedict, like a lot of things with Benedict, the thing is far more complicated because in a, in a, in a interview... In 19, 1983, I think it is, an interview to an Italian magazine that was later reproduced in the Ratzinger Report, Benedict is asked by the interviewer, what does the third secret relate to? And he says, oh, the third secret relates to things in the book of Revelation, to do with the ends of times. Certainly, in this 83 interview, after the assassination attempt, he doesn't suggest, oh yeah, Third Secret relates to something that, that happened already, which he could have done if it was evident that the full Third Secret was about a bishop in white being assassinated. There's more to it, because in 2000, the Fatima Center claims he privately said that wasn't all of the secret. Okay, but then the plot thing thickens further, because he co-authors a book where he gives, I think he gives a forward to the book, where he says, no more secrets remain. But then, in 2010, he goes back to Fatima. He's asked about the third secret, and he says, 
The third secret is about realities involving the future of the church, which are gradually taking shape and becoming evident. <laughs> and the Fatima said to us like, what? Benedict, you know, Benedict reopened. They say Benedict reopened the subject of the third secret in 2010. When coming back from Fatima, he said it's to do with things in the future, not things in the past. And so anyway, that's why... That's why I'm putting Benedict in the in this third category because his opinion is kind of conflicted. So I'm leaving him in this category here, uncertain. Next up, 99 Catholics, which is a YouTube channel. I watch it quite a lot. It's got nice segments on the saints and inspiring testimonies. They actually go along with the full third secret released. They make that quite clear that the third secret related to the attempted assassination attempt of John Paul II. They also go along with some stuff about Medjugorje and Pic Luisa Picaretta and other things. So, you know, they they have some uh, opinions I disagree with. But their stuff on the saints uh, often is really inspiring and really interesting. Next up, this guy. Maybe you know this guy's head. I, I certainly recognized him uh, when I saw his portrait. This is Cardinal Bertone, who, again, was a key player in the Vatican. I think he did he become Benedict's Secretary of State? He was certainly a key player. And he's been a key player in the defense of the third secret fully released. In fact, he authored, he's the guy that I said co authored a book with Benedict, saying that the secret had fully been released. He appeared on an Italian television channel where he showed the envelope with the which contained the four page for third secret documents and he's responded to uh, allegations that the third secret was never fully released someone gave a kind of straw man and said to him oh people were expecting that the third secret related to the apostasy of the pope and of the antichrist taking over the church and so he kind of laughs that off and says you know that's just ridiculous you know <laughs> Um, there's there's lots of stories involving him and some of these figures up here. Not so much this, not so much Clemente, but these guys here. Sochi tried to uh, tried to ask him on one occasion, "What about the faith? The doctrine of the faith will always remain in Portugal." Dot dot dot, which we always understood to be part of the third secret. But before Sochi could ask the question, Bertone's uh, strongmen got got rid of him so that he wasn't able as a journalist to pose his question but anyway but tony definitely believes that the third secret has been fully released and he said sorry guys if you if this disappointed you but this is it there is nothing more next up brand petrie catholic productions another really great youtuber and also scholar i mean he's written that amazing book on the jewish roots of the last supper and i think also a uh, jewish roots of our lady and he has spoken about our lady not so much our lady's apparitions at fatima he's clearly got a great devotion to the blessed mother and he's a he's a biblical scholar he hasn't mentioned anything about apparitions of fatima and he hasn't mentioned anything about the third secret whether it's been fully revealed sorry guys this figure here. Now, this individual is Joanna Joanna Bogle. If you watch EWTN, you'll recognize her. She did a show, a cookery show, at one point. She's also done things on English Catholic history and European Catholic history. She's done a number of interviews on EWTN. And she is currently editor of a journal called The Faith Magazine, based in the UK. And biographically she is very very much tied up with the papacy of john paul ii and has a great devotion to john paul ii and so for her the third secret fully released has become a kind of uh, a point of honor the honor of john paul ii and the idea that there's more to the secret she kind of sees as an affront to john paul ii and his his legacy his person the idea that he was lying so she is fully defending the idea that the third secret is fully released and she's labeled people that are part of this camp the fatimists the fatimists okay next up cardinal burke now you might be thinking if you had read something on the internet a few years ago that cardinal burke 
has said that the third secret is not fully released. In th he certainly said that the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart was not done as Our Lady had requested. But in actual fact, the weight of evidence is definitely that Cardinal Burke believes and teaches that the third secret is fully released. He, after all, forwarded the book by this Franciscan friar that the third secret on Fatima and in his forward he agrees with Father Andrew Apostoli that the third secret has been fully released and again linked to Joanna Bogel he thanked Joanna Bogel for her work in countering the claims of Gruner which he stated was causing great confusion in the church so it seems that actually Cardinal Burke is on the side of the third secret fully released Next up, Conchita, Conchita Kina. I think Kina is her real surname now, but she knows Conchita Gonzalez to most of us, of Garabandal. Now, Garabandal doesn't talk about the third secret. Our Lady at Garabandal never mentioned Fatima. She didn't mention the consecration of Russia. And subsequently, Conchita hasn't had any locutions telling us anything about the third secret. Her opinion on whether the third secret has been fully released is unknown. Elias, known as Brother Elias, of this uh, heretical group, the Divine Messengers. What does he say about the Third Secret? Well, interestingly, he says the Third, third Secret is not fully released. So he joins this group up here. Uh, let me tell you something about Brother Elias' opinion on the Third Secret. He says in, well, he says, you know, it's not Our Lady some he's he hears this voice or he makes something up in a so-called apparition in i think again it's it's in 2020 fairly recently our lady doesn't say to him but he says that the third secret of fatima has not been fulfilled because it's not fully known and then our lady goes on to say that there were more details of that vision the vision like I mentioned the vision of the Pope going up the mountain Our Lady tells Elias that that vision that the Vatican released is not complete there's more to the vision and she is telling brother Elias what the rest of the vision is well, I don't believe of course we don't believe that this guy is a genuine uh, visionary or seer but he thinks the third secret has not yet been fully released and of course like Clemente Dominguez he says that it's to him that the third secret is now being fully released. A few more extra details on the vision. So not saying, well, at least not now, maybe tomorrow he'll have some other apparition saying, you know, the third secret is about the, the great star of Andromeda or something. But up to now, uh, he's just saying that there's more to the vision. Okay, Father Donald Calloway, he gave an endorsement of Father Andrew Apostoli's book. But I think an endorsement is not the same as an endorsement of everything the book contains. Indeed, his, his endorsement isn't saying, Father Andrew Apostoli, great work in telling us how the Third Secret is fully released. It seems to me, I think he might well say that the Third Secret is fully released. But his, his real big, uh, big thing that he wants us to focus on is on the five first holidays. So he doesn't really, he kind of brackets this issue about the third seeker and about the consecration of Russia. He brackets that issue and says, look guys, Fatima, let's get with the five first Saturdays. People are not doing the five first Saturdays. That's why there isn't the period of peace. That's why Russia isn't fully converted. Start doing the five first Saturdays. So it seems like his actual opinion on the third secret is unknown deliberately for that reason, to keep the focus on the five first Saturdays communion of reparation. Next, Bishop Williamson. Bishop Williamson, he's done a number of videos in which he discusses the subject of the third secret. And he says the third secret is not fully released. Indeed, he, he adds that he's got some concerns about the Sister Lucy business. I didn't put Sister Lucy as a head down here because that would be too controversial some people would say i have to have two heads two pictures uh, for the two sisters lucy's which I, I don't go along with that but but bishop williamson he notes how from 1989 onwards 
Sisalusi is saying some different things from the previous. Uh, the previous attitude of Sisalusi was very different. And he thinks that the Fatima has been hijacked by the Novus Ordo, by the the real Fatima message has been hijacked and we've been given we've not been given the full third secret, basically. Next up. This is Father Isaac and Mary Relier. Now you may not know his his picture, but he's got some awesome sermons on the last things. I remember listening to his some of his sermons when I first got a, a, a um, MP3 player or something, I was listening to some of his sermons. I was so awestruck. They're so powerful, uh, his sermons and his words. And in recent years, he has become involved with the Fatima Center and has become a strong defender of what he sees as the, is the, uh, the full message of Fatima, um, part of which is the fact that the third secret has not yet been fully released. So he's in this group. Father James Martin, SJ. Now, he's got his Twitter feed is really active. He's got loads of stuff on his Twitter feed. So it's quite easy to find out what he thinks about different things. And what does he think about the third secret? He doesn't mention the third secret. But what really interested me is the fact that he has a devotion to Our Lady of Fatima. And our lady and and the, and the apparitions of Our Lady at Lourdes. In fact, he watched a film on Fatima a few years ago and was really inspired by it. So let's ask Our Lady of Fatima, our Blessed Mother, to pray for him, to intercede for him. Right now, his opinion on the third secret is unknown. I mean, some people rather cynically replied to his his uh, comments on Fatima and and what beautiful apparitions they were. The things about. Oh, didn't you know Our Lady said of Fatima that more souls go to hell because of sins of the flesh? But, you know, those people are actually ignorant because Our Lady didn't say that Fatima, say that at Fatima. She said that in Lisbon to Has to Jacinta. So, you know, those kind of things gripe me when people don't get things factually correct. Although, of course, Our Lady did say that to Jacinta. Okay, next up. Father Mark Miravale. A great theologian has written some really good stuff on Our Lady as Mediatrix, as Advocate, as Co-Redemptrix. Really smart guy. I think he teaches at Steubenville. He is saying the third secret is fully released. Again, accepting the narrative that it refers to John Paul II's assassination. And he gives some more symbolic interpretations of the, the, app of the vision, suggesting it could have more to it than just the just the assassin of John Paul II. Maybe it has some prophetic dimension to it, but that's what it's about. That is the full third secret. And for him, actually, the real focus point is not consecration of Russia, it's not the full third secret is it released, but he wants this fifth Marian dogma. He wants Our Lady to be declared Mediatrix Advocate Co-Redemptrix, and he thinks that that is the most important issue right now. Not the third secret, not the consecration of Russia. Mother Angelica. Now, Mother Angelica, you know, she was always a bit of a loose cannon, especially as she got older. And so Mother Angelica, rather cheekily, when the Vatican released the full third secret on her live show, she says, you know what, guys? I don't think we got the full thing. I don't think we got the full thing. You know, she doesn't say much more about it than that. But she does say... She doesn't think that we got the full third secret. Um, next up, St. Padre Pio. Now, this should be cut and dry. Padre Pio died in 1968. What's he got to do with the full third secret? Surely his opinion is unknown on the matter. Well, you'd think so. But recently, there has been a book written a Spanish book by a guy called Jose Maria Zavala, which is called The Best Kept Secret of Fatima, El Secreto Mejor Guardado de Fatima. And in that book, this author, he quotes Father Amorth as quoting Padre Pio, saying that the third secret is about apostasy within the church and infiltration of the Vatican by Satan and the church becoming a false church. So... Does that mean that, that we need to put Padre Pio in this category? I mean, I'm not so certain because 
this this statement by Padre Pio is kind of third hand because because Father Gabriel Amorph has passed away. Padre Pio has passed away. And we're taking it third hand. We're taking it through the Spanish author telling us what Amorph said about what Padre Pio said to him. And even more than that, how did Padre Pio know what was in the third secret? There's no... There's no evidence that he ever saw the envelope or opened the letter. The letter was sealed. Unless it's some kind of locution he received. There's a lot of things about this dear saint, Padre Pio, that are slightly confusing. Where Padre Pio says his opinion on different things. Three days of darkness, that still hasn't happened. The um, Apparently some link to Garabat and Dal. Even Clemente Dominguez claims Padre Pio had some some link to him in in palma de troya i think it's safest to put badger pio down in in this category we don't really know if he ever said that about the third secret and whether he would maybe say that actually it was about the vision because you know he wasn't alive in 2000 to tell us whether the vision is the full third secret or not pope francis he hasn't actually mentioned the third secret, so we don't know. I presume that he, I pretty much presume he'd be in this category. But charitably, I'm going to keep him in this category because we don't know. Okay, Return to Tradition. He's got loads of videos on Catholic and Times prophecy, apparitions. We were warned. This is a really interesting series. And yeah, he sides here saying that the full third secret has not yet been released, and he gives a number of opi- number of reasons. He gives some opinions as to why the third secret has not been fully released. Okay, Taylor Marshall. Now he's got his book Infiltration, and in and in Infiltration, the third secret comes up quite a bit, and he draws on the research of some of these guys here, and he reaches the same conclusion. That the full third secret has not yet been revealed there is an additional letter there's a there's a letter that lucia wrote and sealed and that letter which which some people say maybe people are, maybe the vaticanistas would just say oh that's a commentary by lucia that's not part of the secret that's a commentary so maybe that's why they can say the full third secret has been released in good conscience maybe that's what it is because they're saying the four page account of the visions has been released and that is that is the third secret but then there's this other letter that's really just a commentary by lucia that's not part of the secret but actually that letter is a thing that through the 20th century, most of the people like Ottaviani, people that say they heard what the third secret contained, like Malachi Martin, most of them are not referring to the vision. They're referring to this commentary, this extra letter, which contains the words that Our Lady told the children alongside the vision. Next up, Tim Staples of Catholic Answers. He has a video, you'll see it on YouTube, someone phones him up and asks about the third secret. It's interesting that Patrick Coffin poses the question to him, and it makes me wonder where Patrick Coffin sides on the issue. It, you know, he, I couldn't work it out from looking at his channel and his Twitter and, and stuff. I'd like to have known, because in the, in, in the Catholic Answers question, the way he poses it, I'm talking about Coffin, Patrick Coffin, it makes me think that maybe Cat Patrick Coffin doesn't think the secret is fully released but definitely tim staples does again like jimmy akin these guys are apologists their job principally is to defend the faith from protestant uh, accusations and protestant falsehoods and for them the idea that there's a massive vatican cover-up that we can't trust various people in the vatican that doesn't really help with defending the Catholic Church or the Catholic faith. And you can guess why, because, you know, you can think from an apologetic point of view why it's much easier in apologetics just to say the third secret's been fully released. Because that way you can just say to Protestants, yeah, the third secret's fully released. It, it doesn't add an extra nuance to your defense of the papacy, your defense of 
the different people within the hierarchy of the church if you can just say the third secret's fully released it's much a much simpler reality and it makes the church much more easier much easier to defend to people outside the one true church in which alone there is salvation trad catholic knight or trad cat knight uh his uh logo actually says yeah he doesn't believe the full third secret's been released he's got videos on that one next up father mark goring his opinion's unknown, it's uncertain. He doesn't talk about the whether the secret of Fatima has been revealed. So I can't say either way. In the last video, he sided with Medjugorje being a true apparition. So he's a kind of guy that can be idiosyncratic. Uh, he's a very orthodox, faithful priest. I couldn't say whether he's going to be joining Cardinal Burke on this one or whether he's going to be joining you know, Chris Ferrara on this one and Taylor Marshall. It's unknown. And last... But by no means least, Archbishop Vigano. And actually, that's one of the advantages of waiting with some of these uh, videos. Because over time, more people give their opinion. And very recently, Car Archbishop, he's not Cardinal. I don't think he ever will be a Cardinal. But maybe he will be. What a great man. What a true defender of the Catholic faith, Vigano. And of the papacy. Vigano recently has said, no, we didn't get the full third secret. He just came out with that recently in one of his videos. We did not get the full third secret. Vigano knows a lot of stuff. He was, I think some people say he was one of the highest ranking, highest ranking prelates in America. And he was in Rome. He's a true, um, what do they call it? He's a true son of the Roman church. He spent years in Rome in the diplomatic corps. He knows a lot of stuff. And he is saying, we didn't get the full third secret. There is more to it. Okay, so what is the takeaway from all this? So, on the one hand, there's a bit of a ragtag band that have said the third secret is not fully released. They've all got their own opinions on why. But largely, there are people that go along with the scholarship from Sochi, from Ferrara, their scholarship has convinced a lot of people and also ultimately they and in mother angelica's case a kind of disappointment that we were told for years that the third secret related to stuff to do with the dogma of the faith we were we were expecting it to be about some kind of apostasy and so the vision Almost all of these guys, I'm trying to think if there's any one of them, maybe only this guy, this this fruitcake. Maybe it's only this one that says that the vision is not part of it at all. They all agree that that four-page vision that Lucia had, that's part of the third secret. They all agree with that. Uh, these guys say that's all of the third secret. It could be that, that, that some of the ones that really know, like these two, obviously, and this man here... Some of the ones that really know, maybe they're making a mental reservation and they're saying that, yeah, the full third secret, that is this four page letter, this four page account. They're making a mental reservation about the extra letter that contains, that is written in the form of a, an epistle, a letter to a bishop, not a, not a standalone account like the four page document maybe they're mentally saying to themselves oh that's that's uh that's a letter of lucia that that's that's not something we're talking about so that's that's, that's not third secret at all maybe that's why benedict was more nuanced why he said one thing to one person one thing to another person will we ever know the answer to this question it's a really good question will we ever know time will tell maybe time will tell on this one but in the meantime, we can either do one of two things, can't we? We can either be like be focused on getting the full third secret released, like the people from the Fatima Center, or maybe we can be like Father Donald Calloway and really focus on that Fire First Saturday thing, that we need to be making the communion of reparation. We need to be living personally the message of Fatima, regardless of whether Russia's been consecrated, regardless of whether the full third secret's been released. The church is in a mess. We don't need the secret to tell us that the church is in a mess and that there's been apostasy within the church, cardinals betraying cardinals, bishop 
opposing bishop. We don't need a secret to tell us that, do we? But we do need encouragement to live the message of Fatima personally, to pray the rosary every day to make the communion a reparation on the five first Saturdays. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.